The test is in four part, part one, part two, part three, and part four. Now look at part one. Part one. You will hear a woman talking on the telephone to a man about a car he is selling. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hello, Brian Park speaking. Oh, hello. I'm calling about the advert in the paper. For the car? Uh, yes, the Mini you've got advertised for sale. Oh, yes. I just wanted to find out a bit more information. Of course. What would you like to know? It's my brother who's interested, actually, but he's not in today, so he asked me to call you. Fine. Great, thanks. So it's a mini. Yep. And how old is it? Just coming up to thirteen years old. And I seem to remember from the ad that it's grey. That's it. Doesn't show the dirt. <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway, the colour shouldn't be a problem for Jeff. You know, the important thing is the quality. Yes, of course. And what about mileage? With it being pretty old, it's probably over a hundred thousand. Actually, it's forty thousand less than that. Sixty-two thousand on the clock. Great. I remember now. I'm confusing it with another ad I was looking at. Right. Pleasant surprise then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been the only owner, or was there a previous one? I'm the second one. Before it was owned by a teacher who was a very careful driver, didn't have any accidents. Very good. And what about you? What do you tend to use it for? I haven't used it all that much. Mostly for shopping. You know the sort of thing. So not much wear and tear. I'll make a note of that. I know Jeff wanted me to check that. Right. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions five to ten. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Now, about the price, I see you've got it down as £1,250. I'm not sure Jeff will be able to come up with that amount. In the ad, I did say £1,250 or nearest offer. So, would you be prepared to go down to £1,000? That's really too low, I'm afraid. £1,100? I might be able to go to that. OK, I'll make a note of that. What about tax? Is it due soon? Got another five months before it's due. Oh, that's a real plus, yes. I'll make a note of that. OK. Now, you say it's in good condition. For its age, I'd say yes, definitely. It's just been serviced and there were no major problems. Major? I'd be able to show you the service report. The only thing is, you'd have to get a new tyre in the near future. Though it's still OK, you know. It's certainly absolutely safe at the moment. OK, fair enough. Yes, I understand. And the garage also mentioned that one headlight could probably do with replacing. They think there's a fault there, you know, intermittent... Well, we'd obviously look at all the documents, but that sounds very straightforward. Of course. 
I've got all the service documents up to date, and you can look at those. Well, it all sounds pretty good, and I know my brother will be interested. So, would it be possible for him to see the car? He's back from his trip tomorrow and away tonight. So, how about tomorrow? Tomorrow, Wednesday. I'm, I'm afraid that's not possible. I'm out pretty much all day. Well, Thursday then. That'd be fine. Yeah. In the morning. Yes, that'd suit me perfectly. Great. Now you'll need my address. Oh yes, of course. What is it? It's number two hundred and thirty-eight. Two three eight. London Road. Oh, that's easy enough. Yes, very straightforward. So I'll pass on these notes to Jeff, and he'll see you in a couple. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear two students talking about a class assignment about wild bird rescue and rehabilitation. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now, listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Okay, let's go over the requirements and see what we have left to do. Let's see. We have to give the professor a written summary of the information we've gathered on our topic: wild bird rescue and rehabilitation. The other written thing we have to turn in is a case study of the rehabilitation of one bird. We have the information on that already. Right. All we have to do is write it up. What about charts and graphs? Do we need to include something like that? I don't think so. They aren't really relevant. But we do have to turn in a list of the resources we used. Naturally. What about videos? I heard some of the other students were doing that. Well, I guess that must be optional because I don't see it on the requirements list. Okay, we should start planning our class presentation since that counts for half the grade. We've looked at lots of sources of information, but I think our best source was the interviews we did with the wildlife rehabilitators. Agreed. That and the journal articles. I think we have enough information from those two sources for the presentation. Anyhow, the books we looked at weren't all that helpful. I wonder if we should try to bring in some live birds for the presentation. That would be too difficult, don't you think? But we have lots of photos of rehabilitated birds. We can show those. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions sixteen to twenty. Right. Okay. I think we should start by talking about how to rescue a bird. Probably first, we should help people understand which birds need rescuing. Yeah, that's really important because a lot of times people see a baby bird that's all alone, or they find a bird sitting on the ground and they think it needs to be rescued. And usually, those are just baby birds learning to fly. 
So we should emphasize that people should only attempt to rescue a bird that's clearly injured. For certain kinds of birds, the rescuer needs to wear protective gloves because some of those birds have sharp claws and can tear your shirt or worse, injure your face or some other part of your body. Yes, that's an important point. Okay, next, let's tell people to put the injured bird in a box, a box with good air circulation. We should let them know that a cage isn't necessary and a bag, especially a plastic one, could hurt the bird more. Another thing we need to say is that the best way to help the bird stay calm is not by petting it or talking to it, but by leaving it completely alone. Then people should take the bird to the bird rescue center as soon as possible. Right. And we should also point out that when they're driving the bird to the rescue center, it's better not to play music on the radio or talk loudly, because those things just stress the bird. Yes. It's better just to speak quietly while you have the bird in the car. Okay, we've got that part covered. Next, we should talk about what happens at the rescue center. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a discussion between students Maria and Jack. In the first part of the discussion, they're talking about their opinions about some of the things in their universities. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Two four one four double three one. Good afternoon. May I speak to Jack Robert, please? Speaking, please. Hi, Jack. This is Maria. Hello, Maria. How are you getting on there? Fine. I arrived in Nottingham yesterday. I've just settled down and I live on the campus of Nottingham University. Oh, that's good. Do you like the campus? Yes, it's beautiful. What do you think of yours? Edinburgh University? It's marvellous. It's on a hill and very close to the sea. I like it very much. It sounds beautiful. Jack, what's the weather like there? Oh, it's fine and sunny. It's said that the weather here is very nice in summer, but awful in winter. What's the weather like in Nottingham? Well, it's a bit depressing. It's been raining since yesterday. I can't go out, so I have to stay in my room. What about your room? Is it a nice one? Yes, it's small and elegant. How about yours? Mine is an ordinary one. It's a twin study room. I share it with one of my classmates. He's intelligent and very friendly. We're getting on quite well. How's your roommate? She's very nice, but a little bit quiet. She likes reading and seldom speaks. By the way, do you like the Scottish food there? Oh, I like it. It's very delicious. Oh, really? I don't like the food here. It's disgusting. It has no taste. I have to cook for myself in my room. Well, Maria, as the saying goes, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Come on, don't be too choosy. Oh, someone's at the door. I have to answer it, Maria. I'll call you this evening. Bye. Bye. Ellen, 
a student union officer, is conducting a survey about the university facilities. She is asking two students about their opinions. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. I'm Alan and I work for the Student Union. Now, I'd like to hear your opinions about a few things in the university. We've asked for some volunteers to help us conduct this survey into how satisfied students are with the university facilities. First of all, let's take the lecture rooms. We could score them, for instance, 1 is excellent. 2 satisfactory, 3 rather poor, and 4 really bad. Robert, you first please. What do you think about the lecture rooms here? Not so good, I'm afraid. I would score 3. They're too small for one thing. Sometimes we can hardly find a seat. Yes, but that doesn't happen very often. Personally, I think they're alright. They're comfortable, and the acoustics are quite reasonable. It doesn't matter where you sit, you can always hear the lecture. I would give two for them. How do you feel about the car parking facilities? Are they adequate? You must be joking. I can never find a car parking space when I need one, and when I finally do, it's a very long walk to the university's teaching building. I'd give it a four. I'm afraid I also agree. We need more car parks urgently. This is perhaps one of the major shortcomings of this campus. It gets a four from me as well. I come to the university 20 minutes early just so I can drive around looking for a parking space. What about the computer centre then? I think it's first class. The software base contains a large selection of learning programmes, language games and word processing facilities. I would give a score of one. I quite agree with you. It's very modern and also under the supervision of qualified staff who can offer help to us while we work, should we need them. Oh, good. Well, what do you think of the library facilities? Let's say the periodical room first. Well, I've scored that three. I'm sorry to have to say, but uh, I think the room has poor lighting, and I'm disappointed about that. I've given it a score of one. As far as I'm concerned, it's excellent and well stocked. Thank you, Robert and Mary. Now, let's turn to the photocopying facilities. Hmm. I would give it a score of two. Personally, I think it's all right and it's very helpful. Huh? I would score three. I think it's too expensive for photocopying and there are not enough machines. Sometimes we have to stand in a line. OK. Now let's talk about the... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a talk on local businesses at a university business centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. The subject of this evening's talk at the North Bank Business Centre is local businesses in the area surrounding the university and the benefit they bring to the employment prospects of people in the local area, especially young people at the beginning of their career. We established the centre in response to approaches from several business people in the area who had wanted to start up new businesses but who had not managed to find any help locally and did not know where to turn. Moreover, they had all, without exception, come up against enormous bureaucratic obstacles. We therefore invited them in as a group to meet the members of the department and the students. Stemming from that is the centre, which now focuses mainly but not exclusively on business startups. Just after the centre was set up, snapshot research conducted by the department over the telephone gave some startling results. The information about local businesses revealed that three out of every ten local business startups that we could collect information on had failed within the first six months, and another five had gone within the year, leaving only two. The most common reasons given for the business's closing were, first, high rents, which are 33% higher than the national average due to the area being very central. Second, lack of knowledge about grants, basically because of ignorance about how to access them. And thirdly, a lack of business support, because they did not know where to obtain advice from. Since the centre came into existence three years ago, we have helped change this climate of failure. The current statistics show a remarkable turnaround in the fortunes of local businesses. And now, after a year, only two businesses close out of every ten, compared to eight before the centre was set up. Six local businesses are now taking part in a work placement and monitoring scheme, which is of mutual benefit to ourselves and the companies involved. O Foods, a small start-up company with nine employees involved in organic food and based at a local market, has one final year graduate doing a year-long study on improving the stock turnaround. This was a particular problem because the company found that they were losing sometimes up to 30% of their stock. Another start-up is Innovations, which deals with producing video games. This company, which employs only five people, all under the age of 25, is receiving support in attracting business partners and achieving production targets. In the smaller business category, Sampson's Limited, a courier company which is interested in developing a taxi service, is being offered help with their business expansion plans. Another small niche company called Vintage Scooter, which specialises in revamping old scooters, is taking part in a product monitoring scheme, offering customer service up to a year after purchase to check the quality of their restoration. The first of the two medium-sized companies that the scheme is monitoring is Build Limited, which employs 47 people. A comparison of their products and services with other businesses in the area is being carried out by a researcher who is trying to support them in their efforts to extend the company's product range. The last company, Jones Systems, is perhaps the most interesting because it has been the victim of considerable personnel problems, which have been affecting the day-to-day -day operations of the company. And so, we are looking at conflict management and team building within the company. To sum up, advisors help the companies look at different business options and models apply for grants, deal with employment issues, systems creation, 
and also provide accommodation at the centre to help them start up. E-mentoring for fledgling businesses is also in operation for those who find it difficult to attend the centre personally. The programme is funded by grants from local authorities. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.